For many years, scientists tried to measure the speed of light, but it was far too fast for the crude methods available to them at the time, and they concluded that it was infinite. However, in 1675, the astronomer Roma was timing the appearance and disappearance of Io, a satellite moon of Jupiter, as it passed into and out of the planet's shadow. He found that as the Earth moved away from the planet, the timings became later and later, but as the Earth returned towards the planet, the timings came earlier until they were the same again. He realized that this maximum delay of about 16 minutes 40 seconds in the timings when the Earth was furthest from the planet was the time taken for the light to cross the orbit of the Earth. Thus, the speed of light was not infinite, but was very fast. Today, using his timings and the known diameter of the Earth's orbit, it has been calculated that the speed of light was some 6% higher than it is today. Since then, scientists have made many measurements of the speed of light which they denote as C in their formula. For shortness, as it has decreased, we use the abbreviation C decay, i.e. C D K. What the scientists discovered was that these measurements were continually decreasing as the years went by, and this generated considerable correspondence in scientific journals in particular the prestigious journal Nature in England. There were over 35 articles that appeared between 1926 and 1931. In the late 1980s the Australian creationist Barry Setterfield examined all the available measurements of C. In fact there have been 163 observations with thousands of individual experiments using 16 methods over 330 years and all show a decline in C. When they are plotted the decrease is very noticeable. It was clearly a curve that flattened out in the 1960s to the present speed of 299,792 kilometers per second. This second graph shows that C was still decreasing in the 1940s. What was its starting speed? From astronomical observations there is evidence that it was up to 100 billion times faster at the time of creation. One Russian astronomer independently placed it at 10 billion times faster. Many secular scientists now accept that C may have been much higher in the past. There have been criticisms of the CDK model. The most frequent is that the instruments were inaccurate, but this should have produced a graph like this with measurements above and below the present speed with the accuracy getting better. But this is not the case. Another criticism is that if C changed this would affect many other physical constants. But Setterfield has shown that of 17 other constants, 11 remained constant, 4 increased and 2 decreased. He then showed that they all changed over time as he had predicted. There are some very important results from CDK. Firstly, it affects radioactivity. Evolutionists date the rocks using the small amounts of radioactive material they contain. Using the ratio between what is left of the radioactive element and the amount of the daughter element it has generated, then making many unprovable assumptions, they claim that they can get an indication of the age of the rock. One major assumption is that the present rate of radioactivity has been constant for billions of years. However, if C was very high in the past, then radioactivity is proportionally higher, and it would make the rock look very old very quickly. 
by applying a CDK correction factor to these billions of years they are reduced to several thousand years in line with the age of the earth recorded in the Bible. Secondly, it affects the transport constants, viscosity, diffusion and osmosis. This would put less strain on the body and heart and man could live very much longer even to the 900 years of the early patriarchs before the flood. Insects breathe by small tubules and when sea was high the air could diffuse easily through the small tubules in large insects which they could not do today. Huge dragonflies with a 30 inch wingspan have been found in the fossil record. Thirdly, with higher speed of electrons, nerve and mental processes would have been faster and Adam would have been far more intelligent than we are today. So it can be seen that the decrease in the speed of light has many implications that support the creationist evidence of features of the earth when it was first created 6,000 years ago. You see, there is no conflict between science and the Bible. It is only evolutionary based science that contradicts the Bible. True science really does support the Bible for there is no conflict between the maker of the universe and his inspired word that he has given to all mankind.